Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on anime series, where I review them and then let you know how you can use them in your big eyes, small mouth games, your best in games. Of course, you can always adapt these to any role playing game system with the suggestions I have at hand. So I have two more anime series from spring 2014 to introduce to you, and two more from this year. But let's start with the two from spring 2014 with Mahoka Kokono Retose and Black Bullet. Let's start with Black Bullet. So in the year 2021, mankind is devastated by this parasitic virus, the gastrovirus. They are forced to make powerful walls of this strange metal which makes the gastra inactive in order to protect themselves, to put themselves in walled cities. But there are strange children born now during this period, ones that were born with the gastro infection in them, granting them great superpowers, allowing them to help fight against the gastra, the cursed children. So in this day and age, these cursed children are paired with promoters in order to fight against the gastra and keep humanity safe, noting that all the cursed children are female. So we focus on Rentaru, a high schooler who is a promoter himself. He works for a security company run by his childhood friend and is paired with a cursed child, Enju. The two of them battle against the gastra. They fight against them, trying to help protect the Tokyo area where they live in and to protect all of humanity to save the world from the scourge that is the gastra. Genres of this one? Action. They battle against monsters, get into tough fights. It's a sci-fi. It's set in an apocalyptic future with battles against parasitic monsters. It's also a mystery. There's strangeness going on as to the real origins of what's happening here and mysteries within the own cities themselves. Be things that are going on which cause problems. Now, I rate this one a four. It was a pretty good one. I thought it was interesting, and I do recommend checking it out. It has an interesting storyline to it. Now, if you're using this in a Bessem game, I would recommend 300 points. You're going to make your characters promoters and the cursed children, the infiltrators. Effectively, you're going to have to have an even number of players and split them off. Whether the players themselves want to choose to be one or the other, figure it out, or if you have to do it sort of randomly and then they would build the characters appropriately, they will be paired off into groups and all be working for the same security company and tend to work together on various missions. They will go about making sure to take care of gastra threats, go on hunts, keep the peace in a way, but also deal with the fact that they're going to have to bond with each other, bond with other members of the company, keep things going in an interesting way, deal with the fact that all of them are facing off against this threat of losing their humanity, but also attempting to retain it. That both the promoter and the infiltrator will try to have a normal life to some degree. It is also important to note that the promoters should be either enhanced or have special training in some way that will make them, at least to be a degree, on par with their infiltrator. Hence why they're getting the same amount of points. Which is not average for the peer pairing. Now let's move on and talk about Mahoko Koko no Retose, or irregular at Magical High School. So this is set in an alternate world where magic existed and magic has evolved through modern day society. It has been refined through modern day technology. Now we are set in a world after the Third World War where four major superpowers exist including Japan. We focus on Japan and its system where magic is determined by bloodline. There are a number of major families and minor branching families to them. But everyone that has magic is forced to effectively go to these magical schools that each go by a number, nine schools. We focus on Tetsuya, a magic user who's effectively forced to be the bodyguard to his sister Miyuki, and both of them go to first high school. Now, the fact is, in the first high school, judging on your performance, you're either put into a first class or second class. Miyuki gets into the first class. She is an elite. She is the heir to one of the major clans. Tetsu, on the other hand, goes into second class, where the 
losers are. But he repeatedly proves himself to be much more than his station. His abilities are far different, and he proves himself to be an irregular within the system of this school. Someone who's probably would have been worthy of the first rank, the first class, but because of his standing with the way they test, ends up in the second. So this is an alternate history before. It has an alternate history to the world itself, very different than ours. It's also a science fantasy. It's magic, but almost on a scientific level. So it is a definitely a science fantasy, mixing magic and science in a very interesting way. But it's also a school anime. It's focusing around this school that they're in, them going to school and having incidents and events at the school. Now I rate this one a five. This has really been an entertaining one. I do hope they do more in the future. They've had a couple of seasons. I would definitely recommend checking it out. Now, if you are using this specimen game, I'd recommend 400 points. You're going to make a group of characters, students at one of these high schools, at a magical high school. Now, where they're, where they're exactly going to be placed and how you're going to be placing them within the high school is completely up to you. Whether their specializations are better suited for the secondary class, meaning they're not like they're not the aptitude they're measuring for, or they're being in the first class, completely up to how you are going to play the game. Effectively, they're going to be working together to bond together within these classes, dealing with the aftermaths of the Third World War and the way that the world has evolved, dealing with how society looks at them, how they are forced into the profession of magic user, forced into this school, forced into the positions they are by their very blood and then working along with that and figuring out where they place themselves in lives, maybe dealing with interesting incidents similar to what they do in the anime or stuff on their own. They could have it just mundane school life here, average school life, or you could add an incidents to it. It is completely up to you which way that you're going to want to go when it comes to this. Now let's move on to the two from this season, Isekai um, Nights and Magic and Isekai Wa Smartphone, which is where I'm going to start. So 15-year-old Tetsuya is accidentally killed by a lightning bolt created by God. He wasn't meant to die. So God brings him before him and tells him that he can give him another opportunity. Reincarnation in another world. In a fantasy world. He has one, basically, wish. One desire he can gain from the God. He asks to bring his smartphone along. So the god sends him to this fantasy world, enhancing his mind, body, giving him powerful magical abilities, and giving him a smartphone that runs on magic that he can use to not communicate with his old world, but check up on it. He can watch some anime, he can check out his manga that he really loved. He can't communicate with anybody, but he can have those essences of the world he's lost, and it works like a smartphone in this magical world. So he goes along the way meeting new friends, dealing with incidents that uh, range from just simple ones with various kind of fantasy-based monsters to political incidents with various cities and various countries. And along the way, as I said, he just meets plenty of people that he becomes friends with. Now for the genres, it's fantasy, of course. He is in a magical world with new magical powers that he's learning to master and get better at all kinds of magic goes on, fanciful creatures like dragons and other monsters. It's an adventure. He's traveling to various places, visiting things, seeing new places in the world, visiting new countries, new lands. It's also a harem. He is very nice. All all, most of his compatriots are women, and he's very nice to all of them. He's a nice guy. Granted, he is trying to avoid a relationship up until now. He kind of doesn't want to get into a serious relationship until he's a little older, especially because he does end up getting at least betrothed to one of them, forcefully, uh, and he basically passes it off using information and rules from his own country, from Japan. <laughs> but effectively, it does have a very... It has this harem element to it because it's all women and they all tend to like him because he's a very nice guy. Now, right, this one a four. It's one of the ones I've been very much enjoying this season, and I would recommend at least checking it out. For the fantasy, new world kind of elements, and the interesting part of it that has the smartphone. Harem's not ma major and front and center enough that I would say it's really annoying. Now, if you're using it in a Bessem game, I'd recommend 350 points. You're going to make a, characters, a group of characters that, well, died accidentally by God. They would have, something would have happened, and they all would have died together. 
That's one of those things about it. These people, whether they were your characters are initially connected to each other through some kind of pre-existing relationships or not, their choice, all died together. And they're being sent to a new fantasy world by the god. They're being enhanced with new magical abilities, with new strength and better minds. And they each can do one thing from the old world. Either bring one item or one sort of gift, so to say, that they maybe didn't have before. Your players and you as the GM will work out what this means and the ability it has. Similar to Toya and his smartphone, you'll work something out with your players that they'll have something, whether it's a smartphone of their own or something else entirely that would have its own unique abilities. And of course, run off of magic because that's what the world runs off of that they're heading into. Then of course, they will go on their own fantasy adventures, explore and travel the world how they like, meet with new people, make new friends, bond with people. All along the way, they will do what it, what, how they wish to explore this new fantasy world as, well, modern day people. Now, the last one I want to talk about today is, of course, knights and magic. So we're in this fantasy world where knights use powerful mechanized armors uh, driven by magic to fight against demon beasts and protect the world. Now, we turn back to our world in Japan, where we meet Tsubasa, a mecha otaku who happens to be killed in a car accident. The fact is, though, our protagonist here is reincarnated in this other world, this fantasy world with mechas that run on magic, as a young boy named Ernesti. This young boy, this person who now has his past memories of when he was a mecha otaku, when he was in Japan, is now in this fantasy world where there are mechs run by magic, night runners. So he becomes infatuated with them and wishes to not only become a night runner himself, to master magic, but to also build his own along the way and to improve the mechs using his knowledge of mecha from the old world to make them bigger, better, more special. Now for the genres, this one is of course a fantasy. It's got mecha. The demon beasts are huge monsters. It is a mecha then. So it has the magical-based mecha that are in this place. So it's both fantasy and mecha. An interesting mix that doesn't occur very often. And for a good portion of it, it's school. We focus on him in this school setting. And the fact is that the people that he meets in this school setting are the ones that make the best influence and stay with him the longest. I rate this one a five. It's actually one of my... It's There's an interest about it that has made it one of my favorites that... You don't see fantasy mecha anime, really. Not really. You occasionally do, but this one focuses on it heavily. Most of the other ones have a mixed element when it requires to it, or other elements that I'm not as big a fan on. This one focuses mainly on that. That's why I kind of enjoy it. Now, if you're using this in a Besom game, I recommend 400 points. You're going to make a group of characters, people that were reincarnated from our world into this fantasy world. Now, whether they were reincarnated together some kind of family, or they've found themselves over the years and have made it together. They're now entering into this school to learn to be night runners. And each of them brings with them some kind of love or knowledge of mechanics or mecha. So when it comes to these night runners, not only do they want to pilot them, they will perhaps want to enhance or rebuild them in certain ways. And it will be up to your players how the night runners will evolve in their world, whether it's through tactics or through direct enhancements, or some kind of combination of the two, it's going to be up to your players. So you're effectively putting them in Ernesti's shoes as a group and seeing what they do. And the effects it's going to have on the Night Runner community, on the world as a whole, the other countries, perhaps against the battle against the demon beasts, will be entirely up to you to determine how this will naturally work and how it will evolve. And of course, they will deal with other countries' demon beasts and bond with each other and the others around them that they will meet along the way. The various groups that will help them to build, maintain, learn new techniques, and master them along the way. Because they won't be able to do it alone. They will need other NPCs that they will need to bond with. But that's it for today. So I introduced you to, of course, four more anime series. And I've reviewed a little bit of information too, and gave you some suggestions on how to use them in your Besom game. As I've always said, you could always use these in another role-playing game system. The world suggestions work just the same. They're just as fine. 
it's the fact is it's it's only the physical systems as it is that are going to have to be altered in order for this to work properly. It'll be up to you completely and entirely how to adapt the role-playing game systems to this if you're choosing to use a different one. Mainly character creation, but again, the worlds work fine. But regardless, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe at Church Over the Channel, The Empire, The Work I Do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon. Link description below. There's some great rewards there. Helps to grow and improve the channel and the Empire. Regardless. Until the next time, I bid you farewell.